then after I like made that connection, I was like, oh, like I can apply this color to make them feel like this. Or like if I draw a certain character blue, then that specific color is like applied to that character by itself. Um, and that's how you like show more with like the visuals than what you can like with words. So, you know, we all love you really like genuinely love your color use. Um, and it's inspiration to myself and I know a lot of people. Um, so big, big shout out to you for that. Um, how do you think you like started exploring color on, on that level of depth? Well, I, honestly, like I, I wasn't, I wasn't really big on color when I first started off on art, like, cause you know, I, I start off like, like a lot of people just with a uh, pencil and paper, maybe just like uh, pastels or uh, like chalk. And then and then I was like, man, they're not going to really take me serious. This is like this is like my mentality. But I'm like, they're not going to take me seriously if I, if I don't color this thing, because I don't know, bro. Color was like mad intimidating at first, you know. So and then I was like, yeah, this is this is I'm not really good at this. But then I just kind of kept on doing it. And then I remember I actually took this color theory class. In, in college and that's why that's why even then i can't i can't even really knock college down bro because like because like you know yeah it might be a scam you know blah 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 but like you do gain something out of it you know what i mean like you gain like a little <laughs> bit of knowledge man like I, I was taking like 2d design classes and that definitely helped me with like the elements of design and also mm-hmm. helped me with the with the uh what was it uh, the, the principles of design the principles yeah yeah and then on top of the color theory class, bro, I was unstoppable. I was like, nah. I'm like, yo, and it's <laughs> it's funny to actually feel all the infinity both stones. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> uh, well, you say you. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, man. I was I I was just because it's like it's like I kind of want to apply most of what you're teaching me into my own work because I also noticed that like if if I'm not like super invested into it, like at least at the moment, I'm 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 gonna half-ass it, and, I, and I'm a perfectionist. But also, I'm a procrastinator, so it's like those are just a, that's a dangerous combination. I ain't gonna hold you. Mm, yeah, yeah. I I feel like well, I feel like I'm just always thinking about art. So even when I'm like quote unquote taking a break, I feel like I should be doing something. So I'm like mentally drawing or like painting. So I definitely understand what you mean on that. No facts, and like even 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 that, like uh, those those like breaks and stuff, you know, like man, those breaks are mad needed, man. Like you can't you can't just go hard twenty four seven, bro. Like that's you're gonna just put out like ha- you know half ass work, at least in my opinion, like or at least I'm just speaking for me personally. So yeah, just them breaks are more important than the actual processes. It was just part of the process, the most important part of the process. You know what I mean? So. Mm-hmm. Do you draw every day or like do you try to like have days where you like don't do any type of work at all? I made it more of a habit to draw every day because I remember uh talking to my homegirl and then it was just, I was like I was like man like I'm not really like where I want to be like in terms of art like in terms of just skill skill set and skill level and then she was like, "Bro, you're not even like putting out work every day, or like you're not you're not doing this every day." So I was like, "Damn, I don't know." She when, when she like really went in on me, I was like, "You know what? I should be doing this almost every day, or at least if it's not if it's not the you know, how you even explain this, man? Because it, it could be something simple as just like, uh, you know, when you just like make figures that have like real like not really any like sort of distinctions, like that's what I just be doing. I just I just like I just practice my shading sometimes. Or I just be." You know, just working on on my uh, compositions because it, it just just the smallest things, or just even like observing and 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 doing a still life. So, yeah, before I wasn't really doing any of that, but like that that actually just changed like recently, where mm-hmm. I was like, no, nah, I got I got to start putting more output. You know, even if it's something as like simple as just a practice. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I I've been doing that a lot lately too, um, and I think it's super important to do that because it kind of relates to. Lately, I've been hearing this question a lot in, in like spaces or like online or um, like how to show up, um, like how to show up for the work. And, you know, like people say, like, you don't have to publish a whole piece like every day. You don't have to like put out a whole video every day. Like as long as you like think about or like do something for yourself to like learn something, 
um it, it, that's that's beneficial like i also do like just study sketches of like sculptures so i can get a shape of things um i i practice uh, composition a lot more lately um so it's always like <clears throat> finding that one thing to to do to like help you like learn something new every day and it can be like the slightest thing um but as long as you're learning you like catch that on and then apply it to the next session and then you know a couple sessions down you have a whole a whole realm of ideas that you can like push and pull from um to create work so super important to like just keep at it i would say even behind the scenes you know most of the time you don't have to be like present online that's right that's facts man because I, i remember like just always feeling like the need that like everything that I draw or everything that I create has to be presented on Twitter that that actually messed up the process a lot you know what I mean because mm-hmm. it's like yeah sometimes you just it's just cool to just fuck around this bullshit you know what I mean to make anything and then you know that, that trust me like I said it's just part of the process bro mm-hmm. yeah, I agree yes sir and I don't I'm not too familiar with like your track line online but I have seen you like not in in many spaces or like posting as much. Um, I just wanted to see like how like is there a transition between being online more and less, and like how this affected your mentality and like your mental health? Because like mental health in this space is like a big big topic of discussion, um, and I just wanted to see like how you're doing overall. Like, how's everything going on? Yeah, I remember I was doing uh, spaces, like, weekly, and then, um, man, I, there was, like, just, like, a death in the family, which happened, and it kind of it messed up uh, the routine a little bit, so, it, yeah, my, my mental was just not, was just not in it at, at the moment, so, and, and it was just, like, a, it's, like, a domino effect, and then I, I just really try to stay offline as much as possible, like, now I, I kind of just... Even now, like, I just treat Twitter like, okay, like, I'm just going to just tweet here and there just to kind of keep relevancy. But really, I, I'm trying to be as offline as possible so that way I could just, like, really dive deep into my work and just not only that, but just, just kind of enjoy life, man. Like, I, I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not trying to be a, a, as chronic, chronically online as I used to be, man, because that, that really was, like, detrimental to, to my mental health, like, for sure. So and, and I, I definitely noticed, like, a drastic change from – from me being like less active to like you know when I how it used to be where I was just like always online always posting or always always trying to keep up with like trends just like the movement of everything you know mm-hmm. yeah I definitely get that so uh, you know like they say like being online is like a part-time job nowadays like there's so much to do online by itself but you know you gotta have to find that healthy balance because you don't want to like just be stuck into the algorithm like they say and just like reduce your quality of like your the higher tied into your work just because you're like trying to keep up with the trend or, or movement like you said so definitely appreciate you for you know just taking the time of your day to hang out with us and just talk um it's been a while since we've uh, been in spaces with you so thank you for that i appreciate you brother like i i just appreciate uh being in just in this space right now like and you giving me the platform to just let me talk for an hour you know just you know much love to you brother i'm i'm very i'm very happy just to even call you a a peer bro like honestly you've you've been killing it like just just to give you your flowers like you've been (laughs) killing it brother and even burrito doubt like y'all y'all been putting up so much work to a lot of these artists too so man like shout out to y'all bro appreciate it man i truly care about like the process and, and knowing the artist uh, i think that's genuinely super important to everybody so you know as soon as i got in i was like oh i gotta talk to all these people you know let them know how we feel about them ask them how they feel about everything just making sure they're good because uh, you know protecting the artist and highlighting the hard work is what really matters so you know shout out shout out to the whole team i guess But um, what what are you working on right now? I think you mentioned that you're working on some animations. Um, I know you kind of drop, not on a schedule. You whenever you have new art, you just kind of drop a bomb on this, and you know <laughs> that goes crazy. But I just wanted to ask, like, what you're working on right now? Any big projects? So right now, I'm trying to finish up this animation for Hyper Lethals. 
I did not realize. I mean, I kind of knew in the back of my head, but I was just trying to push myself a little too hard. But like, yeah, it, it's, it's almost impossible to have like a fully finished animation in like three months. So, yeah, I'm just trying to give myself as much time on that as possible. So that's that's just been on, on, on my uh, on my to do list of so just things to do. So you know, every day I'm, I'm I'm working on a few seconds here and there, trying to get all the characters ready. Uh, mm-hmm. And outside of that, I have a, I have a few collaborations um, that that just got presented to me, like with uh, with uh, Stutter, and I shouldn't really say the, the other one actually. I'm I'm just keep that. You didn't hear nothing, but yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm doing at the <laughs> moment right now. So I I just been I just been I just been working on that. Just more one of ones because I'm trying to stay more consistent on on Super Rare Two, and yeah, I think that's about it really. Yes, sir. Yeah, when, when I saw your name on that email list for that one call, I was like, yo, I interesting. But, you know, well, I can't wait to see what you do with that. Um, I was going to ask about your separation between how you approach your animations versus how you approach your one-of-ones. Because they're really distinct, but, you know, they're still they have your feeling. They have your character design, your shape language, uh, your design. But they're like thematically they're very contrasted like you said uh, prior like you were like focused on like energy and, and violence well, quote unquote violence i wouldn't say like that's like violence just like action um but your one of ones are like more serene and like calming and, and, and natural um wanted to ask like how do you approach each one of them differently well normally with the animations i try to make everything as like exaggerated as possible with less with less uh focus on like colors or just like uh, what's the word i'm jumping for like like voices and detailing you know what i mean just like just just the the, the 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 silent language you know what i mean we're just like nothing really has to be said but just based off of like the body language, based off of just off, off of just the uh, just the subtle things, you can kind of feel the tension. You kind of see where like the 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 story is going. And then with like the one of ones, I just put all the focus on like the three C's. I put all the focus on colors, the concepts, the compositions. Like it's almost like a mini project. Like I I really just try to like just throw in as much content as possible. Like. Like that's that, that's just my my uh approach to to the one of ones. Mm. Do you have like any like big aspirations uh, when it comes to animation? Because like I I don't animate at all, but one of my things on my bucket list is to like kind of animate like a short feature film, um, and just like tell a story that way. Uh, do you have like any goals like that with that? Yeah, so, like, what I'm trying to do with all this, like, with the animations is... You, okay, so there's this thing, like, in, in anime, right? It's called Sakuga, which is basically, like, the money shot of, an, like, anime. Like, so, for example, like, like Naruto, the Naruto versus Sasuke fights, or, like, the Naruto versus Pain, or they're just those sort of fights where it's just like, man, they put all their time and energy into those animations and it's just pop. Like I, that I, I'm trying to reach that level. I'm trying to reach like a Miyazaki or Ooh. just a Akira, uh, Akira Toriyama, the guy who made Akira, uh, Kashiro to, uh, Tomo. Like those are, that's, that's why I'm, I'm aspiring to, to do right now with the, with the animations for sure. But I ain't gonna lie, man. You need, you need a team. You definitely need a team for animation. So my my focus is is, is is just trying to be more like, man, I'm running out of words, y'all. My fault. <laughs> it, 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 it's a, it's to, to, it's to like to, to direct, just to, to have a team and to direct them to be like, hey, this is the vision, and 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 and, and this is how I kind of want things to 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 pan out. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's definitely where I'm trying to head out with these, with these animations for mm. sure. Nah, I see that. There was a conversation we had. I don't know who it was with a while ago, but the topic about like directing came up and how like people felt about artists, like not necessarily producing the work itself, but kind of like somebody related it to a conductor in like a a play or a musical, where they just like you know 
pull the strings and and kind of put the vision out there and then having that support of people who can like handle specific tasks and just like to achieve the overall uh, goal that they're trying to make that's that's super cool i'm interested to see how that would look uh, as opposed to like you taking like full reign and full control of all the animation the amount of output would be crazy. I'm not gonna lie. Like a lot of the big artists are doing it. Like, cause cause has a whole team behind him, and all you see are like the schematics of like all these pieces that he's about to produce, and he just like sends it off. We got uh, mm-hmm. Murakami's like that too. Murakami, there we go. Murakami, he's working on ten foot pieces, but he has like a whole warehouse of people just creating these pieces and the output. Is a lot better, and even with the AR AI art now, it's almost like the similar thing with uh, which is just having, yes, yeah, so it, it's. I think I think I think every artist should should pivot to to trying to. Not put all that in on their shoulders and trying to like produce like so much, content, but maybe. May, maybe understanding how to like. To. Vocalize that you know like. To other people, so then they can like produce that for them. In my opinion. Mm. Yeah, the way I often see it is like one of my favorite composers is Hans Zimmer, and he takes a lot of like the rain for composing his music. But just like that mentality of like conducting, like you know, setting the path, setting the ideas, the mood board, that concept out first, and then you know, a collaborative team of effort of just like talents. Um, I truly appreciate that a lot. And I think, you know, a lot of us would probably make some incredible things because I think we're limited to a lot of things. Like you said, you animation takes forever. Like you have to draw every single frame um, and the smoother you want it, the more you have to draw, you know, colors, that's a whole separate thing. The movement, the camera, the music, like it's a whole composition, like literally a, a movie. Um, so I do think that that that's like a new level to unlock once you get to that point in like your artistry. No, for sure. Like, yeah, we don't, we don't get there, man. I'm hoping that for like a lot of artists because I'm seeing uh, this a lot of artists who makes some create like crazy work, but it's like I, I feel like their art takes so much time so much delicacy it's just like dang man if only you had like two or three people helping you out on this man like just imagine oh, imagine where you would like be yeah no one, one day we'll get there um but we're doing amazing so far i'd say <laughs> what's um what's your favorite thing to draw like specifically because like i know some people like drawing hands some people like drawing trees flowers mountains whatever uh, but like, what's like the one thing that you like genuinely enjoy the whole process in? I think you said it, brother. I, I love drawing hands because it almost says like your skill set as like an artist. Because yeah, yeah. I, I feel like that's one thing that artists love to um, avoid. Not all artists, but <laughs> even me, I, I was avoiding hands for like the longest time. But then it's like once I like really knew I how do. to draw hands, it, it, it just it. it, it definitely it definitely shows like where you are artistically like even you know it's so crazy too because like even even um what what i say it's like it's like eyes eyes and hands that's the two things mm-hmm. that, that 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 makes something like super distinct is eyes and hands like for example like mickey mouse you know just the, the how, how he has the same eyes like he has the the, the glove hands mm-hmm. but then you could also like look at uh kashiro otomo's work who's actually one of my favorite artists and it's just like the way he draws anatomy is just insane so that's like the type of level i'm trying to get at so th- like that's definitely my favorite thing to draw is like it's just it's just anatomy for the most part yeah i, w- I will have to say that that's one of my favorite things specifically the hands because i know you do them in a very like distinct way and the cheat code to hands is like <laughs> recognizing that it's literally just a bunch of rectangles <laughs> uh or, or like you know like what's it called What's the 3D form of a rectangle? Oh, uh, cubes. It's like cubes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a bunch of cubes. Like, it's literally just a circle and then a bunch of cubes that bend and rotate in a certain direction. Um, and I think that hands are, like, one of your strongest, um, like, things that you do. 
This is piece called Kids See Ghost. I'm gonna pull it up real quick. Uh, damn, I gotta scroll so far. Um, but if you wanna find a quicker one, um, cause I do love your hands. Oh, the restore your feelings. That man, that's perfect. Like you know, you know how to like handle uh, anatomy and that, like all the bends and the shadows, uh, the simplicity. It's just super effective. So shout out to you and your hands, man. Yo, appreciate that, brother. Yeah, like, yeah, hand, hands, hands are mad hard, but once you gotta get the hang of it, bro, it's it's, it's more than easy, man. It's more about you. <laughs> so I know you take uh, some inspiration from James Dean. Um, but who else do you, would you like highlight as like some of your main inspos in the way you like approach uh, your art? Man, shout out Kim Jong G, rest in peace, rest in peace to him for real. Uh, Takashi Murakami, of course, especially with colors. Wait, hold on, I, I might yo give me one second actually. Let me see because. I just followed this super dope artist that's just been a super inspiration to, uh, to me, actually. And even my peers, man. Like, some, like for example, man, like, Wahid, the way, even, hey. even though he, he has, like, a whole separate uh, medium, I feel like the way he curates, like, these, these, these worlds, that's just inspiring, man. That, that it really inspires me. And also, so I saw Roz too, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. Roz, Roz definitely has a use of negative space that I try to mimic. I, you know, even though, even though I really don't admit it, I'm like, man, I see his work and his colors too. <laughs> Actually, man, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give Roz his flowers real quick. <laughs> so this, his head sure. drop, his bro. When I saw them colors, bro, I was like, nah, okay, I got stuff up, man. I got to just, what am I doing? Yeah, oh, like. <laughs> Nah, that chaka, that yo, okay, bro, and then there's Milan, man. So if y'all if y'all have not been paying attention to Milan, y'all gotta start paying attention right now, fam. Like this, the last piece he dropped blew my god, bro. Yes, I tell you, man. Every time he drops, I'm like, man, like it just gets better and better, and then that makes me want to just like go harder and harder. You feel me, like? Dude, like that is incredible. That is like is literally incredible. It's so it's such a it's a, it's, a, it's a such a simple concept, but it, it's, it's so much to to unpack from it, man. But yeah, I'm saying like my peers, man, those, like those 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 guys, guys and girls, man, they they definitely inspire a lot a lot more than I say, man. Nah, for real, bro. <laughs> it's super crazy. Um, I had this article that i'm written up and they asked me like oh who would you say has your biggest inspirations and, and i immediately went to like my peers and when they asked me like name three artists in the scene i kid you not i will pull up the actual word doc and it's you Milan, and ross uh so if y'all get somebody reaching out to y'all you know that's that's where that's from but i named y'all three because you know truly we highlighted Ross a couple of weeks ago through the burrito. Now uh, we highlight you. Um, and Milan, we actually have him, I think, next week. And, you know, I I genuinely appreciate these conversations because I get a chance to, like, let y'all know that y'all are, like, inspirational. Like, a lot of the times we mention all the big names. Like, ah, oh, Michelangelo and Da Vinci inspired me. But, like, I don't look at Da Vinci every day. Like, I look at a Goliath multiple times a week i look at a ross multiple times a week i come back to works i went back to milan's drawing like seven times like when he dropped um and every time i go back i try to like learn something or like try to understand how they approach the work uh all the small details um like color theory the ross how he his shape language um and, and like you know big shots out to y'all because Y'all are the ones that we're seeing and consuming every day. Um, so I think it's just proper to give you know people like you and, and these artists their flowers for how much like inspiration and motivation uh, we give out to each other. Uh, 
Shout no, out they about to be on the moment. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like I'm telling you, Milan's about to be in the moment. Rod's about to be in the moment. We got Earth boy, man. Earth going crazy right now, bro. I, bro, I'm telling you, like the amount of times that I, I like gas these people up in real life is insane. Like you'd think I'm annoying at this point. Like yo, okay, we get it. Like they're they're fired. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, Look at this, bro. They, man, man. Well, I love y'all, mother. I love y'all, man. For real. Yeah. Big facts, big facts. I also reach out to Earth. <laughs> if y'all see us, if y'all see me up here with Earth one of these days soon, uh, big shout out to the homeboy. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, like, um, outside of visual arts, um, what things do you consume to inspire you? Because you know, I, I watch we watch movies, we look at art, uh, go outside and look at buildings and stuff like that. Um, but I saw like you know like regular arts and visual media. Uh, what do you look at for inspiration? I like to look at like the directing styles of certain directors, like uh, Edgar Wright. Like the way he his uh, his visual language is like super distinct. Like one of my biggest inspirations is Scott Pilgrim. I was I always got prefaces like girl, I, I do <laughs> not like Scott as a character. I do not you know condone whatever he does but <laughs> i just like the movie like the, that's it that's it yeah <laughs> so <That> like, would... <laughs> <laughs> but like when you see the movie and, and he, he just just eat from like baby driver to to mm-hmm. scott pilgrim to, to uh shawn of the dead is like these quick cuts but then you kind of pause them and you're like man this is like it's almost like a comic panel the way he does these things and just like the like the, the use of composition so I, I, I think I think movies, man. Oh man, even there's this one piece actually that I have, and it's called it's called uh, Ego Trip, and it's is dead based off of uh, Menace to Society. Cause let me see, oh man, I gotta show y'all. Hold on, you gotta pin that up. Yeah, so I'm not sure if y'all would wreck. Okay, here it is. But this is literally. Uh, 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 Menace to Society frame that I just took and I was like man that would be so dope <laughs> if like you know Goliath was just like driving the car and then I just added like, all this like chaoticness to, and, and to this piece so mm-hmm. that's what I really do mostly I see I see oh this I'm glad you posted that because I had a question that I forgot <laughs> in the middle of this Um, some of your characters have like this repeating motif of the cigarette um, what does that mean? So, like, what was it? What was it? It was it. There was this thing that this theme of like uh, lollipops and cigarettes. You know what I mean? They just like, you kind of both put them in your mouth, but like, and they both give you pleasure. But it's like, yeah, it, one one is like really. I mean, they're both pretty bad for you. You know what I mean? Like, like. Can't sure. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm like, real one gives you pleasure in the right ways, but no, it's just both bad. It's terrible for you. But yeah, it just, I, 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 I was just running with that idea. Just even, even, um, I don't know if juxtaposition would be the right word, but just like, yeah, just having, having those like, just the cigarettes, just something so grimy, but having all these beautiful colors into it, and just, I don't know, mm-hmm. just, just, I, I, it was, it was on some. Like I'm, I'm just trying to make it look as like scummy as possible because you know even me like smoking cigarettes I'd be like ah I'm like I know it's not it's not I'm just not good for my health but hey it gives me pleasure same how these colors just they give me pleasure so uh, mm-hmm. I I, just, I I like to to use that and so just to kind of get that idea across. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I do get the juxtaposition point of view because you know there is a super strong contrast you can apply to it and it can kind of relate to the whole conversation about presentation. Um, because like, you know, if you see a model, like a high class model smoking a cigarette, then you're like kind of fancy, right? You you know, you're bougie or whatever. Uh, but if you see like a low class person smoking a cigarette, then that kind of changes your whole perspective of things. Um, and I know some people play around with it with having a cigarette like backwards. So you're not actually smoking it, just like kind of hold it in your mouth. So I've always wondered that because I know your characters have it. There's a there's a hyper lethal that has it too, and there's you know a couple of other works that you have that also have it. Uh, the fire starter, uh, which is one of my favorite pieces, to be honest. Uh, that glow that you have in the clouds, um, kind of like with vices. Um, you know, I just want, wondered what that meant to you. 
And then also, I was going to ask, um, what is your all-time favorite movie? Man, all-time, all-time favorite movie. That's a that's a good question, brother. I ain't gonna lie. It it would have to be Enter the Void. That's for sure my all-time favorite movie. Ooh. Yeah, cause man, I think that's the that's the first movie I watched where like. I actually had to pause it a few times just to kind of catch myself. I'm like, damn, this is this was this was mad heavy. I'm not gonna lie. And then I'll come back to it, and I'm like, damn, it just it was like an eye opening movie. I'm not gonna lie, that was like a mad eye opening movie. That that director, because he also directed uh, was it Climax? I remember we all watched in the space once, and it it was insane. But yeah, Into the Void for sure, thousand percent. But I'm gonna need to rewatch that because I I know I know that I've seen the movie, but it's been such a such a long time. Um, but that that's a good choice. I was not expecting that for some reason. I mean, I wasn't expecting. I didn't know what to expect to be honest. <laughs> but that that's a good choice. I I respect it. And just because you're in Brazil and there's no other correlation to this, have you seen the movie City of God? Yeah, actually, I I have. It's funny because uh, Crimson, who's actually in the in the crowd right now, he's the one that that got me to watch it. Cause I was like, I never watched City of God, and he was like, "What?" He's like, "You're in Brazil, you haven't watched City of God." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> That's like the ticket. <laughs> Shouts out to you, fam. Like after that, I was like, "Yes, that movie is so beautifully done, man. Yeah, it's so beautifully done. I, I I'm, I'm actually mad I haven't seen it sooner." To be honest, actually, man, what's that one little dude's name that was going? He was wreaking havoc in the favelas. Oh God, uh, oh, Zed, yeah, I think yeah. little Zed. That dude was a menace. <laughs> that dude was a straight menace, man. That would not slide out here in Brazil. That they, they would do not play with that. <laughs> uh, I and it was like the little the little runs too. That was like going through the favelas, like breaking everything. Uh, nah. Mm-hmm. No, it's funny too because like favelas are like probably the safest places you could actually be in in uh, in Brazil because it's like it's self governed. So like mm. a lot of gangs, yeah. <laughs> so like the gangs are the ones who uh, who who uh, control like the electricity to the water to everything. So it's like even if there's like small crimes happening, like there isn't any small crimes because that means that if there's a small crime, then the cops will come and they don't want that. You know what I mean? Even right now, there's a there's an operation going on in one of the favelas in Rio that. Mm. Yeah, so just under just don't keep in mind. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that movie is amazing. I, I was also mad too that I hadn't seen it sooner. When I watched it, I was like, "There is no way I missed this." Um, and it was recent too. I think it was like a couple years ago. Um, so if y'all haven't seen that movie, yeah, y'all should definitely check it out. <laughs> but um, we're almost reaching the one hour mark. I want to go ahead and invite anybody who's in the crowd to come on up and. If you have any questions for Goliath, uh, go ahead and ask away. Uh, super, you know, genuinely, like I said before, like I've mentioned him as one of my biggest inspirations um, and as a motivator to just like keep pushing myself, concepts, uh, and just my art. So, you know, we appreciate Goliath. Uh, thank you for, you know, giving us the time. <laughs> Can I saw the wave, Joe? Do you have any questions? Tom, what up? How you doing, boy? Yan? Yo. <laughs> what's up? What's up, Yaga? What's up, Goliath? Yeah, good good to, to hear you all and, and you've been great these spaces. And I I had a question for Goliath. I'd say like I wanted to ask him like how do you see yourself in five to ten years and and what would be like uh i don't know how can i say it, like a success or would make you happy to achieve something in i don't know five to ten years maybe that that would be my my question and also i love uh, i love your style and your work go say that yo appreciate you brother and that, that's a good question because i've been thinking about that a lot like a lot lately it's like where do i see myself where where's the space going to be in five or ten years like where are all my homies going to be in 
are we still going to be doing the same thing? Are these dreams are going to still be alive? And and honestly, man, like my whole definition of success right now is, man, if I am just comfortable, if I have all my bills paid and I could just chill and not think about, OK, how am I going to eat? Is my mama OK? Is my brother OK? Is is those sort of things, bro? It's like I don't want to think about those anymore. So like I don't want a big house, a Bugatti. I don't, you know what I mean? I, like, bro, all that is just irrelevant, bro. Like, success is just comfort. Man, I know we shouldn't really be comfortable. We shouldn't strive to be comfortable, of course. But man, like, it just being, it's just nice to just not have certain stresses or certain things in this life that just kind of weigh us down from the day to day. So. Yeah, I, I, I think that's what it is, man. So I, I'm, I'm very confident of, of where my art is and where it's going to be. And I, I, I try to put as much out into the universe, you know, to, to, to make sure that, like, my people's is good. And and hopefully, like, I know I could always give back more and I, I want to give back more. And I, I know every time I do give back more, I'm always blessed. Everything's just like a full circle thing. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very optimistic in the future to be honest yeah yeah that that's that's a great answer man that thank you for answering that and i i also like come across a lot of artists that that had basically the the same answer like being like comfortable and and how can i say like safe and no one i think a lot of artists like uh, just, just one that no one wants. I know, like a luxurious life or something, something like that. So yeah, lo love the answer, man. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much. Bushra Khan, what's Hello, up? Hello, I'm gonna speak, guys. Um, I've been at school studying for 35 hours, and I was so fucking sad I missed your room. But uh, I'm just gonna comment on what I heard because you said something about comfort and um, something I've. I feel like an artist always needs to tell themselves, like, don't get comfortable, always experiment, blah, blah, blah. That shit's important, but it's also important when you're pursuing something creative where there's not, like, for example, my sister's a doctor, right? She has her whole life kind of planned out to the T because she knows what classes she needs to take, what grades she needs to get. For an artist, there ain't no fucking outline. You know what I mean? Like, I could do whatever the fuck I want to. And in that, there's freedom, but there's also fear, right? What if I take the wrong step? So these are things all of us, I'm sure, have thought about. But the thing about comfort is I think it takes, sorry, I'm talking so fast. I've drank like 500 gallons of coffee to study for my exam. But I always remind myself, don't get comfortable, but also be grateful for what you have. Because if you're in that mindset where like, yeah, I can pay for my mom's bills and, and I'm taking care of my family, but I want more. You don't always need that. You know, like if you can take care of your own people and do what you love, like that is the more, you know, that is the freedom. And I and I can see that you move that way. And I just wanted to commend you on that, because I think that's such an important lesson that many people just take such a long time to learn. And that's obviously OK. We're all on our own path. But like you've got that and, and like keep that, you know, because I think as success grows and for you, inshallah, it will like it's sometimes hard, you know, like you get stuck and shit. But I just want to fucking say there's artists and then there's Goliath. I am such a fucking big fan of yours, Goliath. Like, <laughs> I see your work and I just got to sit. Like, I got to fucking sit and just look at it because I'm an amazing artist. But your shit, like, blows my fucking mind because I don't understand how you do it. You know, like, in that recent piece, you drew that butterfly and it's 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 just a simple butterfly. But you made it your own. You know what I mean? Like, that's Goliath's butterfly. You know, and that that's just so beautiful. I think you're truly such an amazing fucking artist because I don't understand how you understand color. I don't understand how you compose your pieces. I don't get it. And it's something I want to learn. You know, like you inspire me so fucking much, bro. Like I'm such a big fan and I'm so sorry I missed your room. But I just had to come up here and like. Like, I'm honored to know someone as talented as you, bro. Like, like I just, I love you, man. I'm so proud of you. And just, just you know, inshallah, like, God blesses you with so much because the effort you put in your artwork, like, I believe you will be rewarded. And you are, you know. 
But yeah. Yo, I appreciate you, but she got me tearing like God damn. No, but for real. Yo, shout out to you, but it's honestly, man, family for real, man. Like, thank you so much. Like, thank you, truly, thank you for the kind words. Because I, I don't really be seeing myself like that sometimes. And then I have, like, people like you who who kind of remind myself, like, no, like, you know, you're good, you're dope. And you know what I mean? Like, just, it's, it's, it's really, it, man, just thank you. Thank you, for real. Wanna welcome in Earth. We tried connecting earlier, but we got him up here. Oh, bro, you shouldn't have invited me. I'm at the airport right now. Oh, Cap. Can you guys hear, even hear me? Why'd you request it? Oh, I did. <laughs> oh, good. I just want to yeah, say, yeah. yo. Regardless, though, I just, I mean, I joined like ten minutes ago. Goliath, you're my goat. None gotta be said, bro. None gotta be said. Simple as that. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. I gotta, I gotta pull up to our Basil just to link up with you, cause oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm gonna be there with a couple of my friends, so Milan not gonna see me, but everyone else will probably. So I right, say less. And also, bro, like the work, the output of work you've been putting out, Lee. I just gotta give you that too. Like, it's insane. You nah, been going dude, off, nothing bro. about like, me, please. bro. Nothing about me. This Relax, is about you, brother. Nothing about me. This is about you. Simple as that. Yeah, we got Earth space <laughs> later on. <laughs> nah, shout out Goliath, hundred percent. Y'all, y'all hear it? Y'all see the inspiration? Man, uh, you're such a humble human to being too, bro. I love you so much, Goliath. I'm so, so proud of you, bro. Like I remember when I first met you. That's the crazy fucking thing. It's so crazy. I mean, like I don't know. It's just beautiful to see, bro. Appreciate you, King. Appreciate you. Appreciate y'all for coming up. If nobody else has any questions, I can go ahead and keep going. What happened to Joe? Oh, he went down. Uh, it's all good. <laughs> but um, Goliath, I wanted to ask you a couple more questions about art. Um, what's a style or a movement of art that you don't really understand? Like, you just look at it and you're like, huh? You know, I think that was abstraction for, like, the longest time. And I remember I actually got, like, a lot of heat for that. This was, like, way back when, like, five, six years ago when I was just kind of stubborn. And I was like, no, I'm, no, okay, this is real art. Like, just being an elitist, like, punk. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, never, I never understood abstraction until, like, I've seen a few artists who did it. And now I'm like, no, nah, it, it follows all the themes of, of the three Cs. It follows the colors, the concepts, the composition. Like, this is art. You know what I mean? Like, because, because. I mean, anyone, anyone could throw a spot on the wall, but what, is, what makes this so significant? But no, it's, 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 it's really the energy and just the way they just use like certain negative spaces or even how they use uh, certain colors to, to, to display death. You know, like, cert- man, you know what? I know I've been talking about Omen, but like he especially, I always give him his flowers when, it, when I see him work. And I'm like, dude, like, you get it. Like, you genuinely get it. Because the compositions, the, 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 the color theory that you use and the consistency of it is, just, is, is, is incredible. You know, like, I get it now, man. Like, truly. Yeah, I, de- I definitely know what you mean. Because that, that was me, honestly. Like, when I was in school and they were nailing us with all of this art history and all the classical masters and the neoclassicism and the Rococos, I was like, oh, this is what art's supposed to be. And whenever they would show me like a Pollock or, you know, or a Rothko or, you know, the squares, um, I'm like, what is this? But if you actually like sit down and like change your mindset about it, you start picking it up and you're like, oh, like it makes sense. Like it just clicks. Um, So definitely like abstraction is like one of those things where even though I know that I wouldn't be the best at it, like I still want to try it and then see what I can like express because it really is just all about expression um, and, and feeling. And, you know, shout out Tijo for the blue. That was like the peak of me realizing what really, you know, what it was um, and going beyond like a, a simple color or, you know, just a canvas or whatever. Uh, so I feel you on that. 
Yo, shout out to you, for real. He he took a color and he defined it. He 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 redefined it for real. Man, that's that was art history. That was literally art history. That is just yeah. truly. Do you have a color that resonates with you like that? Any color that resonates with me like that? Oh, that's for sure pink. For sure pink. Like oh. man, that that is the color that is just so appealing to the eye. That just makes everything just look good. You just pop in pink just right then and there and just makes everything. Oh, my God. Okay, so I'm going to just, like, nerd out real quick about colors. Go ahead. So, like, <laughs> Go ahead. so the, best, the, the best colors to, to put together is, is orange, pink, and yellow. And just any variation of red is always going to be appealing to the eye. If you use orange, is because there's a reason why uh, they use orange for, like, hazard signs and stuff like that because that, that's, the, that's the most eye-catching color. So if you just know how to, like, use it sparingly, or if you use it just to kind of like just to really catch the viewer's attention, then mm-hmm. yeah, you know, shouts out to you. But like, yeah, so it, it would be pink and orange because they always look good together, man. Pink, orange, and yellow. Yeah, that's a really good combination, to be honest. I was kind of expecting green because you did say you, I know you have a lot of green in your work. Um, but yeah, usually, those three. Oh my fault, bro. I, I was gonna say usually like when I have greens in the work, I it's always accompanied with red because green could be a little uh overbearing so it's, you you mm. need so you need a complementary color to to uh to cancel it out a little bit to just add balance mm-hmm. what's your least favorite color then Something probably green. rarely use <laughs> <laughs> no it's, <laughs> it is my least favorite color man i ain't gonna lie it is i don't i don't know how to how to say this without sounding crazy but like i don't really use a lot of black in my work like and the only the only reason why I don't use black in my work is because my color theory, theory teacher she like really drilled into my head. She's like black isn't a color that's found in nature. It's 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 it's, it's manufactured. So ever since she said that, and it's like when you use black, it it, it, it takes all the attention. I like to use it now, but like if you go to any of my uh, recent works or not recent works, any any of my like my past works, like even the one that's a that's that's a poster right now, the ego trip. Like you wouldn't really see uh, too much black, or if it is black, it'd be like like a really really strong dark purple. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. I I think I try avoiding. I mean, try, I avoid using black in, in a lot of my work, and I also do just like do that deeply saturated purple or like a rich red um, for those like you know the darkest tones. But that's valid. That's valid. Do you have a all time favorite piece that you've done yourself? That's, hold on, hold on. Uh, if I have an all time favorite piece, probably the rhinestone piece, the MF Doom piece that I made last year. Oh. That was definitely my all time favorite. The only cause. It's my favorite piece, obviously, because I like the rapper a lot. But I remember it was like a point in time in my life where, like, I didn't really have a home. And, like, I was, like, literally living in, uh, it's like a studio. And it was, like, me and my homie were just, like, man, like, we're in a situation right now. And we got to get out of this. So, like, we got to just keep working. And we were just, like, we was, I'm telling you, like, every day just going crazy. He's putting out music. I'm putting out art. And then, boom, like, MF Doom dies. So, I was, like, damn, like, bro, this is, like, it's kind of, it kind of hurts. And uh, I remember I made that piece, and then that was a piece that actually got me out of uh, that situation. Just off of the prints alone, I had enough to get us to get me and him into like a way better situation than what we were. Were so I guess for that reason, that's like my all time favorite piece. Mm. And it's crazy because like looking at it now, I'm starting to like realize all the motifs that you've spoken about, like the cigarette in the in the mouth, uh, the pink. Um, just like the shape language and everything, especially the your cubes that you include a lot in your work. I know there's some pieces. Um, there's the one. Is it in that suite as well? Um, yeah, the one with the dress where it like goes from like fluffs into kind of like rectangles and just like cubes. Um, like it's all like tied in together in that piece. Oh yeah, the, that I think that's the the second one that's posted on the uh, my favorite pieces of 2021. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. actually my second favorite piece, Under the Sun, because because uh, even with that piece, I, I remember I told my mom because like 
I, I sold I sold my first NFT and I was like, bro, ma, like yo, like I sold I sold I sold a piece for like a thousand dollars. Oh my god! And then she, I was like, yo, I was like, yo, send me a picture of you. And then I swear it's gonna sell for millions. I was like, well, it's gonna sell for millions. Watch. And then I made that piece, just like inspired by her. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. I, I knew it had to be like a motherly figure uh, when I saw it, but now hearing that it was actually inspired by her, it's you know that's touching. I love that. Um, let me see what. Um... Yeah, shout out to moms, man, for real. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Um, is there, like, outside of like making art, um, like really, if you were not making art, what do you think that you would be doing? I would be a hibachi chef. I ain't gonna lie. I always, I don't know why. I just be like a world class hibachi. Chef. I love, I love cooking, man. That's like my favorite thing. Like outside of art, I guess that's like an art form in itself, like culinary, like presentation, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. Yeah. You know, even performance with the hibachi thing, but that is for sure something I would love to like. Just go crazy. I'm talking about like learn like in Japan, like Shibuya, like the real art of like Ooh. hibachi. You know what I mean? Like, man, I'll go, I'll go crazy. Nah, I feel that. You be cooking a lot. Wait, what's up? Yes, yeah, so do you cook a lot? Not not as much as I used to since I'm like traveling a lot. But mm-hmm. when I was like staying in Denver, bro, like I was man, <laughs> I was like Chef Boyardee, like just straight chefing it every day, bro. Like my favorite thing was like brisket and fish and and then all that, man. Like I, I genuinely love cooking. And even back then, like I was, I was cooking like crazy. I was feeding the fam. I was feeding the village, bro. Oh. Always feeding the fam. You hear that? Man, a lot. It's for the people. If I see you in uh, Art Basel, man, we got we to gotta cook, bro. We got to... I'm going to make sure everybody everybody in. Bet, bet. Um, I was going to ask something, but I forgot. It kind of, like, left my mind when we started... Because I'm kind of hungry, to be honest. <laughs> so, uh, the cooking stuff got me thinking. Um, let me see if I can remember real quick. If not, all time favorite food, I'm just gonna put that out there as a uh, sauce bar avec du blanc, uh, grill. Now, nah, I know Cliff Knock, <laughs> that's my man, best food, bro. Have you done any work surrounding foods besides like <laughs> the MF piece? Yes, sir. Okay, hold up. There's, there's actually a piece called Cyanide that I that I uh, posted, I think, in 2018. That is, uh, it's kind of based off of uh, food. Let me see if I can find it. I need to see that. All right, bet found it. It's actually like well, one of my favorites, also. But just it's basically the Goliath. Just him just chilling. <laughs> and I, I try to make it as, like, disgusting as possible. Which is, but at the same time, it's like the colors. You just can't, like, not look at it, you know? Oh, I see. Oh, I don't think I've seen this one. You got the all smiles on the tongue. And that, that's actually before I knew all you, too. That's, that's crazy. So the flow bar for bar.
So besides the the theme of the ego and and that, what's like your other favorite story to tell? Because I know there's there's a thing that people say that there's only like however many stories like, and everything else is like a variation of that. Like, do you have any other like tales or, or like stories that you been put into your work? I'm starting to notice uh, with the with the recent pieces, like, uh, let me see if I can find it, actually. The one that's the, the provider piece, I'm going I'm, to I'm, uh, post it back up top. It's, and also the, the, the wasteland piece, I, I'm, I'm trying to use as many uh, figures and subjects as possible because I, I, I kind of want to do uh, more theme, themes about, like, revolving around community. Cause that has just really been a big thing for me lately is just community and just like being a part of something and just like kind of helping everybody. And, and I guess, I guess that's the reason why I made the, the provider piece. Cause I, I, like a lot of people were helping me out and it was almost like, you know, I, I was, I was in a situation where I was, I was helping someone that was close to me. And, and, and at the time I felt like the provider, but then there's some times where I could resonate with, with the, with the kid that's holding the, the, the mushroom basket and he, he's just waiting for somebody to, to pick that, to pick that, uh, outside of like ego but even those are like one and the same you know you sometimes you gotta step outside of ego because those pieces are are most of the time they usually have like goliath in them you know they they usually have you, you know like where, where he's literally put aside like to, he's put to, to the side of like that the one figure you know it's almost like he's setting his egos aside so he could like help his his uh his brother you know so yeah i hope that answered the question Oh yeah, definitely. I I was like lately I've been doing like very like narratives, like telling a story and like sending out a message. Um and I, I just love that when artists do that in itself. Um I think like meaning and intention behind the work really goes far. Um, especially when it comes to you like your work and how you present it. Like this is a whole universe that you're like creating and Goliath like being like a reoccurring theme which is like kind of like telling your stories in a sense. Um, I think that's just like beautiful to see in your work. I feel like, like you're really connected with what you do. And I, I appreciate that when I see it in artists. No, I love bro. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, is there a Halloween out there, by the way? Are you celebrating? Man, I ain't gonna lie, bro. It's like every Friday, Brazil just goes completely insane. And it's like you cannot escape the noise. Like I, like I said, I had to get a whole Airbnb, and I'm like, I did not realize that it was gonna be like this loud even here. <laughs> no, that's funny. <laughs> I'm really ready. I'm ready for carnival. I ain't gonna lie, man. I heard, I heard it's just a different world out here. Like I, I might have to pull back around, circle sort the of block just for carnival. Like I said, y'all, y'all gotta, y'all gotta come out, man. I'm telling y'all. Yeah, you know, that burrito dad's gonna fund the, the Brazil trip. Everybody's gonna fly with a burrito in hand. We're gonna be out there. Now burrito dad Brazil will go wild. I ain't gonna lie. <clears throat> hey, let's just drop a collection like all of us in in, in the space. Just drop a, a collective and you know fund the project. We can do it. But we're reaching the kind of like the hour and a half mark. I I can keep going, um, but we're probably gonna close out this space in a little bit just so we can let people enjoy their Friday night. Um, I know you might go out there and celebrate a little bit. So big congrats again on on your sales. Um, you've been killing it lately. It's amazing seeing you just progress and and improve overall. Uh, so shouts out to you. We're, we're here to celebrate Goliath. Give him his flowers. Man, no, I appreciate that. But honestly, bro, like, it wouldn't be possible with, like, telling, like, Cliff and, and, and Thales, man, and Terrell. Like, these things would not be possible. These sales literally would not be possible. Like, everyone that's pushing my my stuff, my work, is I, it really would not be where it's at right now. So I really got to give the praise to them. You know, like, it, it's, it's cool. It's... it's 
Very fortunate, man. Very fortunate to be surrounded by a lot of talented, talented, extremely talented and giving artists, man. It's a blessing. It's a blessing every day, bro. For real, man. Yeah, genuinely. Yeah, I was I was gonna ask you, um, in your Web three journey, uh, what has been like the biggest takeaway from from it all? The biggest takeaway is just is it's just the community. That's like that. That's really it. It's just it's just the people you meet in, in, in this space. That that's what that's what makes it worth like uh, staying in. Because even um, back when I was I, I was trying to get into like these galleries, there's just so much uh, gatekeeping and elitism and, and and no one really giving you a chance or a shot because you know you don't have enough quote unquote clout or if you don't have you know the the the, the right presentation but but uh, this is the uh, the one space that I, I never really felt like I was judged or belittled because of because of certain shortcomings that you know I, and I never really felt like I had to prove myself because because everyone just with open arms so that, that has just really been my takeaway from um from the the web the web three journey so far is it's even the collectors that, that I've met who I, I'm very proud to even call friends it, it's it's, it's just it's very impactful, man. It's, it's, it's definitely impacted my my personal life, the people around me, and just just everything, man. It's insane. Yeah, I, I think about it often, and I always think about how we're like a lot of us got introduced to each other around the same time when we like kind of took on this journey, and you know we were kind of like not sure if we were like how long we're gonna stay in the game, like what kind of approach. Uh, we would want like we tried out hella things um, but it's cool to like realize that you know like all a lot of us are still here and we've like grown to be friends and peers and collectors and you know mutuals we meet people travel the world like Goliath is doing and it's you know you, you did mention like success being like freedom um, and I think this all ties into that and you know I'm happy to see that for for you and for a lot of us um we're just like working on it daily. Uh, what would be like one of your biggest critiques about uh, Web three? Then, uh, I'm not. Ah, oh, man, is there any critiques? Not nothing that comes to mind at the moment. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I, I can't I can't really think of something off the top of my head because so far, for the most part, everything's everything's been been pretty positive no i don't think so i like that i like that answer positive mindsets so i, I won't even lie to you brother it's getting like a little too loud in here um I, I might actually have to dip uh in like a little bit uh no, it's, it's all good we, we can go ahead and close close to that if you want to go ahead and enjoy your night or not be stressed out um, we've been here for an hour and a half and, you know, truly appreciate your time. Um, and just, you know, talking to you. I know it's been a while since you've been on spaces. So thank you for that. And thank you for, you know, <laughs> working with us in, in the conditions that you're at. <laughs> no, appreciate you, man. Appreciate you for everything. Like I said, bro, like you're amazing, man. Shout out to Brito Dow. Shout out to the fam. Yes, sir. Shout out to Familia. Uh, I mean, if anybody else in the crowd has any last minute questions, uh, go ahead. But if not, uh, you know, again, thank you for the for the time, Goliath. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Oh yeah, baby, let's go. Well, I hope you know. Thank you for all the listeners that hanged out today. Um, Shouts out to y'all for supporting. There's a lot of you know friendly faces in the crowd. A lot of us are just friends. <laughs> so, you know, we're here for each other and, you know, truly love to see it. So shout out to y'all in the crowd. And with that, we're going to head, um, let everybody enjoy their Friday night. Go crazy. Go, go party. Go make some art. Get some rest. Watch a movie. Yeah. Enjoy life. <laughs>